Hey, what's going on guys? Rum Gaming here, back in another video. Today's episode, we're going to be doing a quick overview of the cell add-on. If you're not sure what cell is, cell is going to be the healing sort of unit frame that I'm going to be using going into season one of War Within. And it's going to be very similar if you've seen Quasi Wow's video. Um, I'm going to be taking a lot of the things from his video. I'm going to be simplifying it down to only Mythic Plus. And then I'm gonna put like a few small twists on it, uh, just how I personally set the profile up. So shout out to Quasi, because without him making his video, my video right here would not be possible and I probably wouldn't even made it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the video that he made and kind of simplify it and streamline it. His video is like over an hour, hour 10, something like that. Um, it's a very long video. I had to skip through a lot of the parts. So I'm just going to simplify this down for Mythic Plus specifically. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is you're going to go into Curse Forge, go to Browse, and you're just going to go to the search and type in Cell. And you're going to download this add-on here that has 800,000 downloads. And just press the Install button. And then once you do that, Install is complete. So once Install is complete, you can go back to your client. And... You will have something kind of similar to this. Um, it won't look exactly like this. I have a little bit different styling, but what we can do is we can press enter and we can type slash cell space OPT. Then we will get a menu that pops up here. And the one thing that I really like about cell is how straightforward it is to set up. There's not like a ton of crazy options that you have to worry about. It's very simple, streamlined, and there's only like eight tabs here. And to be honest, most of these tabs aren't that in depth. But for now, we're just gonna worry about this about tab here. And what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to import the quasi profile that I have in the description of this video. It will take you to his website and there will be a Google Drive link. Simply copy and paste that string and then press import or copy it, I guess, and then paste it into the import box down here at the bottom. And then you'll get a big long string. And then once that's done, you can press import over here on the top right and it will import Quasi's profile. And then one other thing that I do want to mention is that might even be better. It, it just depends on, you know, what type of content that you play, how you want the initial setup to be. But if you do like my sort of setup towards the end of the video, you can also import my profile as well. I'm going to put that in the description of the video. Same thing as Quasi's, you just come in here, you press import and you copy and paste this string in. It will be completely set up outside of a couple other things that we'll kind of walk through later in the video. Now there are some things that we are gonna have to go in here and change. So once you get that imported, go ahead and go to the general tab. And one of the things I wanna bring your attention to is moving these frames around. So when you kind of hover over your frames here, you'll see this sort of red box. And that red box is how you drag your frames around. So if you're not clicking directly in that box, you won't be able to move everything around. And if you're unable to move everything around, you probably have this lock cell frames enabled. So make sure that is unticked if you do want to move this around. Once you get it where you want, you can go ahead and lock it back if you want. We have some general options here. Show solo, party, raid, all that good stuff. So if you're playing solo and you want to you don't want to show your health bar, you can untick it and it will go away, right? Then in terms of this tab, there's probably nothing else I would change. So we can move on to the appearance tab. So this is where you can kind of come in here and change the coloring of your unit frames. And over here on the right, you can kind of see a preview. So one thing you'll notice here is on preview three, down here in the bottom right, you can see we have some sort of white shading and some red shading. And it's pretty important to know what these mean because this will pop up over on your unit frame as you're healing and you'll get all these like weird gradients going over your, your bars and you'll think, what the heck does this mean? Especially if there's overlap. So the red means heal absorb. You can obviously change that color if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and untick it for now. We'll, we'll turn it back on here in a minute. Then the white is shield texture. So anytime, like say you're playing priest and you put, put up a power word shield, you'll kind of get this white texture. So if you do have white texture while you are healing, that is a good thing. If you have red texture, that is a bad thing. That means you need to get through the heal absorb. Now I untick both of these and then you can kind of see here, it also has heal prediction, right? So if you have somebody else healing your current target, say you're in a raid environment, you can kind of see, you know, what, what healing is ticking on that current target. And if you even need to heal them, such as, you know, like a heal over time effect. 
So very important that you understand what those mean because they will pop up and it does make things look a little odd as you're healing, especially if you've never seen these colors before. Then preview two, you can kind of see here as the target loses health, kind of the shading of everything. And then in the preview one section, you can kind of see what it looks like if the target gets a heal over time effect, a damage over time effect, a debuff. Now going back to this side of the screen, we do have a scale bar that you can turn up and down if you wanna make the UI bigger in general. I don't wanna do that, so I'm just gonna press no. Well, actually, let me turn it back to 1.49. Uh, UI reload is required. I'm just gonna press no for now. I can always reload in the future. We also have a UI options font size that we can increase to increase the font. So just a few small options here. Now, one thing that will look different on yours that we kind of talked about already is the coloring schema. I think Quasi by default has like red and green and I like to change that. So I come down here to health bar color and I just change it to class color. You have a whole bunch of different options here. You have class color dark that you can use. You get different gradients that kind of work off the stoplight color system, right? We got a red, yellow, green. And you can see in the preview, as the target loses health, the color will kind of change. Some people like that. I personally just like class color. So, you know, pick whichever option suits you best. And then under health loss color, I like to make it dark. That way I can kind of tell who is, you know, taking the most damage. You can also pick class color as well. It's just a little bit harder to tell you know, as a target loses health, you can kind of see here in preview too. So I like class color dark. Then we also have power color here. So since we are mana users, you can kind of see that we have the blue bar. We can also change this to other dif different colors such as class color. We can turn this to power color dark. I just like to keep it on the normal power color. That way it's very obvious, uh, you know, which spec, which class has that specific power bar. We also have bar animation here. It just kind of changes how when health bars move around just the animation on that slightly changes. I just keep it on smooth. And then on texture here, I believe the default is smooth. So I just leave that as well. Then we have a couple options here for highlight color and mouse over highlight. So when I mouse over my unit frame here, you can kind of see I get that light green border. When I click on it, it turns to red. And then we do have a slider here to change that highlight size if we want. I like to keep it on three though, personally. And then we do have a couple options here to kind of change the coloring of everything, the alpha. So just to show you this top one here, health bar alpha, you can slide all the way down and you can kind of see the colors change. And then down here at the very bottom, we do have debuff type colors. So if a curse effect does pop up on a target, it will put this little purple icon, a bleed will be the little blood droplet here, a disease, the skull, the magic, the little swirl, and then the poison, the sort of poison icon. I don't know what you call that. I guess the, the green teardrop. But this is obviously very important to have these icons so that you know what effect is on what target and who you need to prioritize the spells on. So that's pretty much it for this tab. Let's go ahead and get into click casting here. So you'll have a whole bunch of random things in here by default. So what you can do is if you want to remove those, you can just come through here and you can right click them and then you can press save and they will pretty much be deleted. So we also have an option here that says use common profile or use a separate profile for each spec. So if you are something like a Paladin and you play a whole bunch of different specs, you might wanna set specific key bindings for that one spec versus some of your other specs. So if you are somebody who plays like two or three different specs, you have different key bindings for each spec, then go ahead and select this option here. If not, you can just select use common profile. It'll be the same key bindings no matter which spec you go to. So I just use use common profile for now. And what this does is I now have set a key binding to this frame. So when I left click, I will now target myself, right? When I middle click on my mouse here, I will bring up a menu. And then when I right click this frame, I will cast my detox spell. Now, one thing that's really cool about cell is you can change this to different options, right? So you can do an item. I'm not sure what custom does. Um, I've not really played with it, to be honest. Uh, but you can come in here and you can change this to like a specific spell. You can change it to a macro, which is really cool. So you can set a key binding for whenever you hover over this specific frame here, you press that key binding and it will call whichever function that you have set. So everybody's going to change on this, set this up how you want to. Um, I just personally use this for my right click to detox and I keep things simple. Middle click menu, left click, left click is my target. 
And then I handle my key binds all down here on like one, two, three, four, five. So go ahead and set that however you want. And then once you're done, you can come down here and just press save. Then coming to the about tab, you can use import, export, and then backups. We've already used the import button, but if you wanna share your profile, you can press export. Now let's go ahead and move on to the layouts tab. So the layouts tab is something that I kind of glossed over a little bit too much by accident, and I kind of messed things up. So when you get to the layouts tab, the first thing I want you to look at is the uh, layout drop down here. So we have default, mythic plus keys, we have mythic raid, and then we have normal heroic raid. And you can set up different profiles based on what type of content that you're in. So right now, let's just go ahead and change it to mythic plus keys. And then over here on the right hand side, once you're in a party, you can set that specific profile. So right now, basically what we're saying is, hey, we're editing the mythic plus key profile. And when we join a party, go ahead and default to the mythic plus key profile. And then if you want to tab through here, you can go through here and press preview party, raid off, party raid off, just kind of toggle through each. We're going to be looking at the party. So go ahead and just switch that over to party if it's not already there. But I also have sort by role here. And what this will do is it'll put the tank at the top, then the healer in the second position, and this will put the DPS below that. So this is really helpful, right? When you're in a dungeon, let's say you have three paladins in your group. Sometimes it's difficult to know which one is the tank. But if you select this option, you'll know that the tank is always at the top. Then we also have some options here, right? You can kind of change the width and the height of your specific bars. So if I kind of drag this to the right, you can see the bars dig it a little bit wider. I'm just going to kind of leave it where I had it. And then we also have that slider for height. Then we also have a slider here for power size. So as I drag that up, our mana bar will get taller or shorter. We have orientation. So if you want the bars to be up and down or if you want them to be kind of left to right, going to leave it as vertical personally. And then from here, we just have some other small, you know, like spacing, how many units per column, uh, that sort of stuff. And then down here in the bottom right, we have power bars filter. So if you don't want to see certain power bars, you can come in here and take off the ones that you don't want to see. So basically the way we have it set up now is the only power bar that we're going to be seeing is Death Knight as a tank. We can kind of see uh, their power bar just to see if their health is low, how much runic power they actually have, if they're able to heal themselves. Outside of that, you shouldn't really have to worry about anybody else's power bars. So uh, this should be like this by default, but just so you know it's there. Then yeah, I don't know, I think that's pretty much it. So again, you go through each of these tabs to edit that specific profile. And then over here on the right, you can set which profile to default to when you're in that specific type of content. So make sure that when you come in here and change things around, if you're a Mythic Plus player, that you're editing the Mythic Plus tab here, and then under Party, you have it set to Mythic Plus. Okay, that's everything I'm gonna cover about that tab. Let's go ahead and move into Indicators. So first thing you wanna do is come down to Layout, and you wanna make sure, again, that you're on Mythic Plus Keys. Make sure you're not on Default, or you're gonna be changing settings for like when you're a solo player. You wanna make sure you're on Mythic Plus Keys so that you're changing these specific settings. So again, make sure that you have the Mythic Plus dropdown selected. Then just to kind of talk about some of these, we have name text here, which is going to change the text on your unit frames. We also have the roll icon here. So you can come in here and change the texture to whatever you want. So for example, I like some of these icons better, such as like default to um, changes how the icons look a little bit. And again, this will appear in the top left hand corner and you can kind of change some of the positioning on those icons if you want. We also have the leader icon. You can kind of see it glowing here to see who is the party of your group. We have the ready check icon here in the middle to see who in your group is ready and who is not. We also have the aggro border, so you can see who has taken aggro in your specific group. We have tank active mitigation, which is actually very useful. It's this little bar here that kind of ticks down, and this is going to be mitigation that tanks should have up at all times. So for example, like shield block, you can kind of see iron fur, demon spikes, mitigation that should be up most of the time, probably not all the time, but it's a way to tell if your tank is playing their spec optimally. Up next, we also have the dispel tab here. So you can kind of see, right, a curse effect will be purple. We have the orange for disease, blue for magic, green for poison, and then red for the bleed. And I really like this because it changes like probably 
20 to 30 percent of your bar here and it's very obvious which effect is up and you come in here and kind of play with some of the sizing and you know, how you want that to look then we also have the debuff section here which is pretty nice to know for example like it will track things like who's being resurrected at a specific time so we don't have three people resurrecting the same target we have debuff trackers for exhaustion and sated so if you're a shaman you're going to be able to track who has lusted and and the timer till you can lust again nothing too crazy here nothing you should have to change your import up next we have targeted spells so targeted spells are very important because you want to know when one of your allies are about to be hit with a high damage spell so for example if you have an ally who is being targeted with like a big shadow bolt you know that that target is about to take big damage so you can kind of prep a shield or an active mitigation on that target before the damage goes out so that they're not you know potentially one shot so this is very powerful because a lot of healer add-ons don't have this now the downside of this is this is a list that will change from season to season and you actually have to import this so i'll put the import list in the description of the video all you have to do is click the link copy and paste the string and you'll paste it under the import tab here paste in the string you'll press import and all these will be replaced and scroll down and make sure that censoring gear is the very last uh icon here or the very last uh, indicator excuse me once that's imported you should be good for the remainder of the season and you know when season two comes around you just have to come in here and import quasi's list for season two we also have a missing buffs so this is going to be you know if you're in the group with a druid or a, a priest who's forgetting to use their buffs it'll kind of warn you give you a little icon here to to remind you so nice to have that and then we also have the healers tab here so the healers tab isn't going to be anything that you have to like import or anything it should all be here for you for all healer specs but what this is going to do is this is going to let you kind of move some of your healer icons around on your unit frames so if you want to be able to track heal over time effect say you're something like a druid or even mist river monk has a couple heal over time effects you want to track let's just take renewing mist for example i press it and you can see it's right here in the middle of the screen so if you did use my cell import my specific profile will look like this. I can't remember what Quasi's looks like if you used his import, uh, but mine will look like this. And I'll just show you this and I'll show you Enveloping Mist as well. So this will work is put Enveloping Mist up, excuse me, Renewing Mist, then I'll put up Enveloping Mist. And you can kind of see how Enveloping Mist kind of got pushed to the left-hand side of Renewing Mist and Renewing Mist got pushed to the right. So as you fill this up with Heal Over Time effects, whichever spell is first kind of gets push to the right further and further and if you do want to change that i'm on the mythic plus keys layout right now but i'll just go to the default tab to show you guys you can scroll down here to healers scroll down to size and i'll put renewing mist on myself and as i make that bigger or increase the size drag bar you kind of see the icon size has changed so you can come in here and kind of play with that as you see fit and then if you want to change the icon positioning i'll put renewing mist on myself again you can move your X and Y offset here. We'll just set it to 100 really quick and watch the, watch the Renewing Mist icon. You can see it kind of went off my bars, put it back at 50, and you can play with those values to get your positioning correct. So yeah, you know, you can just kind of come through here. It's just settings to play with some of your different icons. Make sure that you're paying attention to uh, which layout that you're, you're on specifically. You won't see the changes real time unless you're in a mythic plus group so you do have to swap over to default if you want to test out some changes on your own then yeah guys that's pretty much it in terms of raid debuffs I, I haven't changed anything in there and then in utilities i haven't changed anything in there so yeah let me know what you guys think i tried to cut out all the meat from these other videos that are like hour hour and a half long uh, tutorials kind of covering some of this stuff if you want to see absolutely everything highly recommend to check out quasi's video in the description of the video if you're just interested in mythic plus i think my my video here does a pretty good job just kind of getting you set up with this if you guys have any questions at all feel free to drop a comment below in the video thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel we'll see you on the next one